Join now. Alright, this build is completely broken. I carried the Tormented bosses with various people in it. I carried Lilith all on day one. I did Infernal Hordes up to tier 7 by myself. I got uh, full Ubers for my build. All of this in day one, by the way. 1 to 100, all with this build. This build is in incredibly powerful and has pretty much allowed me to finish the entire game, included, including Pit 100 plus on day one of playing uh, without issues. So, let's talk about the build. But before that, uh, this video is sponsored by the Crimson Market, a trading website with actually decent solutions for trading in Diablo 4. For example, I can hover over this item in game, press Ctrl S, and I can list my item with their app to their website. If I do not know the price, I can say it's a bid and in how many hours, then I can list it. And then on their website, uh, I can see my listings, other people's listings, Mostly I use it for materials because I do a lot of boostings. I can see how many Stygian so stones are up for sales, cost that when, the battle net, battle tag of the player. I can message them. Equipment, I can search for specific stats via AI or simply just type Tempest Roar and I will find a Tempest Roar and, you know, get the one with the lowest price. Very good website. They also sponsor people like Buddhism Rocks. Also, every month uh, they do giveaways. Uh, for example, there's this uh, last Epoch theme computer that was given away and won by Fate0820. To get those rewards, uh, you click on join on the club section. You scroll down uh, and you're going to find the golden ticket, which will give you 30 days free premium. For example, the next giveaway is in four days. So you can join uh, for four days, five days, and then you can cancel it. Uh, and this way you've entered the giveaway for the computer for free. I started playing this build when I got my Earthbreaker ring and my Unsung uh, Gloves. When I got this, even honestly, before you get the Earthbreaker ring, you can play that in Storm if you want. When I get those two items, I switched in it. The Mjolnir ring is not required. In fact, Cataclysm is a really strong skill early game. It does a lot of damage. And I played it with Earl till up I got my uh, Ring of the Star Skies. Before that, I played with the Mjolnir and with the Cataclysm uh, version of the build, which you can find, of course, on Mobile Atex. I will show you. I will showcase the Paragon board for the Starless uh, Beast version here, and on the Mobile Atex website, you can have the one for the starter version with the Cataclysm. Why is it different? Because we do not play Ancestral Guidance. The Legendary Node Ancestral Guidance does not work with the Mjolnir Ring because you are spending zero. It does work, uh, though, with uh, Ring of the Starless Sky. So in, th in that case, uh, but you don't play it, but pretty much it makes you spend zero for your spells. It doesn't grant you infinite spirit, as it says. That's fake. So because you have to spend 75, it does not work, and we do not run that. How does this build work? And I changed a couple of things. Let's talk about it. I introduced into the build... The Butcher Cleaver, amazing early game item. It has attack speed, quick chance, and move speed, and damage to injured really high, and oftentimes it will come as a 925 drop, very strong. The Wild Hunger boots are very strong, you can obtain them from Zir, and you can obtain the Vasilis Prayer from Varshan. Those are fairly easy boss to do whenever you get to the mid game. If you're not there, you can play my win shear leveling build like I did till I got to the mid game. It's also, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Those two items are very strong. It makes your landslide into a bear build, into a bear skill, and you can get all the buffs of being a were bear, like uh, survival instinct uh, and any shape shifting bonus like quick shift and defensive, uh, def defensive uh, skills like uh, defensive posture. Well, not that's not for bears, but iron four it is. So whenever you want to be more defensive, you can you can have those talents. On my amulet, I have my natural balance amulet, Earthbreaker. 
Not really good one, it's 23%. Mjolnir Shring. Uh, Cataclysm does a lot of damage, especially with this ring, which will do double damage. Also gives you move speed and will power boost your damage early game quite a bit. For my offend, honestly, getting projectile off landslide doesn't matter for the build. It does not do anything for it. It doesn't give you more nature sphere proc, but it gives you a little bit more damage early game on landslide. Landslide, instead, uh, the aftershock does work quite a bit with the Nature's Fury, based on passive, and that's important to have. Damage to Distant is my favorite type of damage, and I try to have crowd control damage on one roll, that way you can have 6% on Final Shock and on Earth and Devastation big buffs for this build. I also run with Tybalt's Will, and I run with Symbiotic on my chest. This is very strong as it gives me resources when I spam Cyclone Armor, because when I spam Cyclone Armor, I'm actually casting as well Earth and Bulwark. Usually I do not cast Earth and Bulwark unless I am CC'd and I let my Cyclone Armor cast Earth and Bulwark for me. So you spam Landslide and reset the cooldown of Cyclone Armor with Symbiotic. The interesting thing about Cyclone Armor is that it's a skill that does not have a global cooldown and it gets cast immediately and it does not influence on your DPS. It also activates the natural balance aspect, which is a lot of crit chance and a lot of crit damage. As you can see, I have a lot of crit uh, chance in this build. Right now I have 71% and that's without counting the 25% from feared enemies. That's a lot. So pretty much almost a 100% crit chance and that's without the Scythe Talon talent. I'm mostly going for tankiness, a mix of tankiness. Here I have mobility, for example, for Boon, right? Because I want more mobility because I don't die. But if I wanted, I could get more tanky with Weariness. Pretty much same thing with Iron Feather. You can have attack speed if you want. Always keep, of course, the Avian Wrath. And then play around with Iron Feather or attack speed. Attack speed does work double in this build. Because you get more lightnings from Lightning Storm, the more attack speed you have with Nature's Fury, but also cast Landslide faster. So it's a two for one, or as my Midwestern friends say, a two for in the US, I believe. Calm before the storm to recover the cooldown of your Cataclysm. It is technically possible to have Cataclysm on virtually no cooldown. If you have GA cooldown reduction on your offhand and you run with cooldown reduction for Cataclysm on your amulet. Is that the build best in slot? No, but it is best in slot if you can find Ring of the Starless Sky. If you do not have Ring of the Starless Sky, then that's not best in slot. The Doombringer, which was my second uh, Uber of choice, I thought it would be stronger, to be honest. The chance to heal does not heal as much as I thought. The max life is amazing, the all stats is good. It's a really good Uber, especially when you don't have a 3GA item. It is uh, extremely powerful. I do not regret taking it as my second Uber. There could be in the future maybe an Andarial version, but I already calculated it to be worse than playing the bear version. I'm happy with those two Ubers and there's really no other Ubers that I want. I crafted one of them with uh, my four shards that I obtained by completing the seasonal quest, killing Lilith, killing Tormented Boss, uh, and uh, finishing the campaign. And then I, I was lucky enough when doing tormented bosses and bosses run to get uh, one more Uber. And then I crafted the one that I was missing. Now, this Paragon board is a slightly different version than the one on Mobilitex because I am running it with uh, out uh, the Mjolnir Ring. The one on Mobilitex is for Mjolnir Ring users. If you instead want to play the Ring of the Star Sky version, I'll show you the difference. So what I changed in the build is that I found out that sixth glyph was not extremely powerful for me, right? It costed me also a lot of points to add a sixth glyph. And it would only give me Undaunted or Dominance. I have changed my Paragon board to not have also Ancestral Guidance. Start to have ancestral guidance because uh, I can use it now that I don't have the 
Cataclysm Ring. So I'm taking a Social Guidance, but I'm not taking uh, this. Instead of taking HP here and another Paragon Glyph that doesn't do anything for me, I'm taking, instead of that, Titan Malice with more HP. And I'm taking a lot more HP nodes uh, in a lot of places that before that I was skipping because I simply did not have enough points. So this makes my build a lot better in my opinion. I have more HP, I have uh, heightened malice, uh, and of course I pause on enemies with constricting tendrils, which is a question I get a lot. It's for second poison and that's really all you need. I don't really have any other necessity other than that. This is still in testing, I will see if I can find something better than that. But overall the build has worked wonderful for me and I'm gonna be going to bed and it has been uh, 3, 5, 6 hours, 18 hours. I played 18 hours to complete the entire game pretty much. All content complete besides, I mean I could do an infernal ord tier 8 tomorrow, even now I could and then pretty much that's all content besides pushing pets. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys again tomorrow on stream if you are gonna be there. See ya.